<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Osiris Stephan. And I'm Nina Simmons. And, and we're, we're the hosts of, of the Love and Cannabis, Cannabis Podcast. Podcast. We started our podcast over a year ago to share our story of how we are helping our son manage the severe epilepsy with CBD oil. Aiden was diagnosed with epilepsy when he was just two years old. And each week we talk with medical professionals, parents, business owners, and other cannabis advocates. All of our guests are so inspiring, but this coming week, on Friday, we have a very unique guest. That's right, Nina. On Friday, October 23rd, we sit down with Bruce Linton, the former CEO of Canopy Grow Corporation and one of the true cannabis titans. Bruce has done so much to improve the lives of so many people, and we are honored that he took time out to talk about the future of cannabis with our listeners. We hope that everyone will tune in on October 23rd to hear a special interview with Bruce Linton on the Love Love and Cannabis Podcast. Podcast. Welcome to Hemp Barons. Thanks for tuning in today. We have a really interesting show with our guest, Dwayne Sternholm from the Colorado Hemp Processing Cooperative. During my chat with Dwayne, one thing was very obvious is this guy knows hemp. He's super patient, and he takes the time to really explain all about this amazing plant, including the difference between marijuana and hemp, and all the different parts of the plant, and what each part is used for. But our conversation is mostly centered around the Hemp Processing Cooperative, so thank you for listening to Hemp Barons, and please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. I'm Dan Humiston. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Dwayne Sternholm. Dwayne, welcome to Hemp Barons. Oh, thank you, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about what we're doing here in southeastern Colorado and uh, what we're going to be doing in the hemp industry for the whole country. Where do the listeners hear this? This is a really, really exciting and ambitious project. Just looking at it, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take our time with this because it's such an awesome idea, but we need to explain to our listeners a lot of the aspects of this so everybody has a really good foundation going into it. So maybe you can explain to us what industrial hemp is and how is it different than other cannabis plants? Sure. There's a lot of misconceptions and misinformation out there about cannabis. The cannabis plant is the cannabis plant. I don't like to use the word marijuana and even the word hemp. The the only difference between cannabis and hemp is a statutory one. Hemp is cannabis that has 0.3% or less of tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. It's just by statute that hemp is kind of carved out from the rest of the cannabis. A couple of different types of hemp. When you grow for CBD... Most CBD guys space their plants three to five feet apart. So that translates into about four to 5,000 plants per acre. Now, if you're growing industrial hemp, it's a whole different ballgame. You want a tall, straight plant because those decorticate better. But in order to get those plants to grow straight and tall, you grow it a whole different way. You grow it about 75 plants per square meter instead of like one plant per square meter. In a typical acre of industrial hemp, you'll have 400,000 plants instead of 4,000. Wow. Right now, there's about 70,000 acres of hemp in the United States. If you look at something like corn or soybeans, there's 90 million acres of that growing. 90 million acres? Holy cow. (laughs) The potential is astronomical. Wow. Take a minute and break down the different parts of the plant. You have the clean, separated seed, and that can be used for lots of different things. And then you also have uh, some residual flour, which can be extracted into the CBD. So there's two products there. But then you still have the stalks. Take those stalks to the processing facility, and you decorticate those into the bast and the herd. You're basically producing four products. One of the ones, the seed, the flower, the bast, and the herd. And out of those four products, you can make the 25,000 products that everybody says that hemp can be used for. Give us a couple examples of some of the 25,000 products. 
the seeds can be used for food or they can be, you can press out the oil, the oil, the hemp seed oil can be used for made into biodiesel. Food wise, it's a very good source of omega threes and omega sixes. The bass is used for things like hemp creek. They use it a lot in car interiors. BMW uses hemp herd in the panels of the interiors of cars. You can make ethanol out of it if you want, just like corn. Then you have the fiber also, and and the fiber is typically what's been used to make textiles. Another use for that vast fiber is they're starting to use it in supercapacitors. And they found that it works just as well as the graphene that they typically use in supercapacitors, but at much, much lower cost, and it's much greener than graphene. And supercapacitors have the possibility of replacing every battery in the world. I mean, that's a whole market that hasn't even been tapped hardly at all. Oh my gosh. I mean, you give us a great education on the plant and at least four different components within the plant. Talk about yeah. farming industrial hemp. What type of climates do we need? How long is the growth cycle? Fortunately, hemp can be grown in all 50 states. It's a very hardy plant. It can even endure a, a few light freezes and still be okay. It doesn't use a lot of water, but it needs some water at the right times. And then also it has a nice factor that it pulls out adulterants out of the soil. Like it can even pull out radioactivity. They're using hemp plants around Fukushima and Chernobyl to help clean up some of that tainted soil because it can pull out radionucleotides. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk for a minute about a cooperative. Explain to our listeners who have never heard, including me, who do not understand what a cooperative is. Yeah, there's a whole different set of rules for cooperatives versus a corporation. The major differences are that a cooperative, you can just sell shares of the common machinery and equipment, and you raise money by selling shares, and then everybody owns a piece of it. A cooperative doesn't make a profit. It can generate excess revenues. And by statute, those excess revenues have to be returned back to the shareholders. The other things that kind of differentiate from a a corporation is that it doesn't matter how many shares you have of the cooperative, you only get one vote. So the patron shareholder that only has one share versus the investor shareholder that has a thousand shares, they only both get one vote. So that makes the shallow pocket guy feel like his voice is just as important as the deep pocket guy. So there's a sense of fairness there. By statute, any excess revenue distributions uh, at the end of the year, a minimum of 50% of that have to go to the patron shareholders. Are you looking for a career change? I'm Carson Humiston, the founder of Vangst, the cannabis industry's largest hiring platform. I'm so excited because on October 21st and 22nd, we are hosting the cannabis industry's first virtual hiring event. It's two days of great speakers, networking, and most importantly, jobs. We have over 50 cannabis companies all across the U.S. hiring for more than 500 positions. This is the place to go to find your next job in the cannabis industry. To sign up, visit banks.com. So how are you going to set up the Colorado Hemp Processing Co-op? In our situation, we have patron shareholders and we have investor shareholders. Our patron shares are $100. Our investor shares are $1,000. The patron shares, they get to share in the excess revenue distributions. So we'll use the other 50% of that excess revenue and pay back those investor members their full investment. Once they're paid back, then their investor share will revert to a patron share. A patron share is cost 10% of what an investor share does. That's like a 10% return on investment right there. And then they can also share in the excess revenue distribution in perpetuity, just like the other patron shares. I see. Can we jump backwards one second and talk about a processing facility? Just explain to me how a processing facility works so that I can kind of visualize what one would look like. We're doing full plant processing. So we will 
go through and harvest the seeds and the flowers. And then we will take that material to the processing plant and we will separate out the seeds from the flower. Then we also have the stalks to deal with. You run the stalks through a machine called a decorticator. So after the initial decorticator, there's what's called the decorticator line, which is further processing those materials to whatever spec the buyer wants. The same with fiber. You'll have shorter fibers and longer fibers. But that's the four products that we will do out of the processing facility. Yeah. So is, is that is that clear? Yeah, Yo, that's really clear. Let's just jump forward and let's talk about Colorado Hemp Processing Cooperative. Where are you in the process? Well, we're fully registered with uh, all the powers that be. We currently have 90,000 patron shares and 10,000 investor shares. So we have the capability to raise about $19 million. Our processing facility, the first one we're going to do down here in La Junta in southeastern Colorado, we want to build the first processing facility down here, and that's about $8 million. I see. Now everything's in place right now, and then you... Yeah, we're just raising money right now to build our first processing plant. And so the way that you're raising money is either through patron shareholders or investor shareholders. I think I understand this, but to clarify it, to make sure I do, if somebody were to invest a million, at some point they would get that million back. They would get their full investment back. From that point on, every share that they'd purchased will... It reverts to a patron share and they'll still get their share of the excess revenues at that point. That could be a really nice long-term annuity for someone if if it works out that way. Yeah. Okay. What if one of our listeners is in another state and they're interested in what you're doing and want to be part of it? Anybody from any state can be a member of our cooperative, but we're looking at a much bigger picture here. What we would like to do is see have a cooperative in every state and then each cooperative in every state be a shareholder in each other's cooperative. That way we can share best practices, we can share resources, we can share financial help, we can share personnel, we can share equipment. Yeah. And just all of those different things. We're all working towards the same goal to build the industrial hemp industry into what it should be. Well, Dwayne, this has been very, very insightful and educational. I'm confident that our listeners are coming away after listening to this much better informed on the entire hemp industry. We've been speaking with Dwayne Sternholm, who is the co-founder and operator of the Colorado Hemp Processing Cooperative. And all their information, including how to become a patron or an investor, will be on the MJ Bulls website. Dwayne, thanks for being on Hemp Barons. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to do this. What you're doing, Dan, is a great thing. We just need more good information and correct information to get out there so everybody knows what we're talking about and how we can all move forward together to to make this industry the best it can be. Well, you're on the right track right now, and I'm anxious to watch this thing unfold because, as people have said to me before, if cannabis is cherry pie, uh, marijuana is just one cherry in the pie. The hemp industry is the rest of the pie, and we are just getting started here. So The cannabis and the CBD industries are going to be tens of billions of dollars of industry, but the industrial hemp is going to be hundreds of billions, if not trillion dollar industry yeah, yeah. once it gets all going. Thank you. Good luck with this project. And let's stay in touch, okay? Okay, will do, Dan. 